Can you tell me if you can hear me now? Let me know if you can hear me now. You type a comment to that effect as well. Can you hear me? Now. Ah, so yes, they're saying yes, thank you. So I've just taken my external microphone out. I don't know what the problem is. Um, as I say, it's exactly the same problem by the look of it that I had last week. Um, I tested my microphone the minute I stopped going live and it was working fine. So I have absolutely no idea what the issue is. Um, I recorded a video of myself, same setup, same everything, and it was completely fine. So I wonder if it's some weird Facebook thing. Um, I've got a lot of demonstrator friends who are having endless problems with Facebook Lives at the moment. So my apologies. Um, I'm hoping that you can hear me okay um, and I'm just going to not even try and get it to work because I don't think there's very much point at the moment. So pain in the backside but there you go. Okay, so I can see a comment but they disappear very quickly. That was another improvement that Facebook just made. Um, in one of their updates they've uh, the comments flash on the screen and then they disappear unless I tap the screen on my iPad. Uh, they used to just sit there the whole time, which was so much easier, but there we go. So, I'm going to re <laughs> restart, as it were. I haven't said anything very important, luckily. Maureen is here. Welcome, Maureen. She says hello to me and to everybody. Um, Belinda and Mary can hear me okay, and I'm hoping... And yes, Carol can as well. Excellent. Okay. Well, it's really chilly today. I don't know what it's like where you are. Uh, down here we've got a cold wind. Uh, there's some sunshine in between very dark clouds, but it is really, really cold outside. The weather forecast this morning said it was going to really warm up later on, but that <laughs> hasn't happened. So uh, luckily my craft room is cosy, but I don't know what the weather's like with you. I have no idea what it's going to do this weekend. I'm not going anywhere or doing anything in particular, um, but, uh, but we'll see. So I would love to know about your week. What have you been up to this week? I've had a very busy week. Um, I've got a busy few weeks of classes coming up. So I've been designing and cutting up card and there's quite a lot more of that coming up in the next couple of weeks for me. Um, but that's okay. So Pam is also saying she can hear me now and she's saying hello to everyone. Excellent, thank you Pam very much. Okay, I'm trying to think if I've got any other news to tell you. Um, what have I been doing recently? So my daughter last weekend, we went to a vegan, um, like a like a farmer's market, but, but vegan producers in Brockenhurst, which they do once a month, on the third Sunday of the month. I have to say it was very good. I'm not vegan, I'm not even vegetarian, but my daughter is vegetarian, her partner is vegan. So um, they were very excited by it, but it is lovely to talk to small business owners who are absolutely passionate about what they do. There were crafts there, there was jewellery, um, there were lots and lots of edibles, um, organic vegetables, there was a bakery, um, oh gosh, what else was there? Wax melts and candles, um, there was somebody doing massage, all kinds of things. So I would say it's definitely something you would be interested in, whether or not you are vegan, don't let the vegan bit put you off at all. Um, it was absolutely lovely. I picked up some Christmas presents already, so that was good. Sorry to use the C word for those of you that don't want it heard yet in October. But yes, third Sunday of the month in Brockenhurst, Brockenhurst Village Hall. They have a Facebook page, Brockenhurst Vegan Market, I think it's called. Um, but uh, yeah, highly recommended. So that was really nice. So let me see what everybody else has been up to. Carol says she's freezing. She's got a blanket over her knees, a little heater on. Uh, she hasn't had the heating on during the day yet. No, we've resisted it during the day, but um, if it keeps getting cold like this, I can see it may come on. And yeah, blanket on your knees. I do have one in my craft room. I haven't got it on at the moment, but, um, but yes, a blanket on your knees can be very comforting, can't it, on chilly days like this. Oh, Mary, no, you broke your toe. Now, you can't have done that crafting, surely. What on earth have you been doing with yourself? I'm really sorry. I've broken a toe in the past and it is unbelievably painful. Um, and a real nuisance while you wait for it to heal. So I really hope that you're doing okay. Belinda's got her heating on and she's still cold. Oh no. How's Tansy? Is Tansy warm? I'm sure she is. She's probably snuggled up with blankets above and below her. Um, 
near the heater with any luck so um, hopefully you're both going to be okay all right so i'm waiting to hear what mary has been doing with herself um, meanwhile i will give you just a couple of bits of new stamping up news there's not a lot to tell you this week um, you've got one more week to order my painted christmas suite sampler um, which is a mixture of pattern paper and card and ribbon and embellishments um, i'm taking last orders for those orders close on Friday next week. Um, if you can collect it from me it's £16, if you would like me to post it to you it's £18 um, and if you need any more information you can pop a comment below or send me a messenger message um, and I'm happy to give you that information. If you're a regular um, class attendee or on my mailing list you may have seen from my list of classes for this year which I issued ages ago um, that my sweet sampler for uh, November which would be sent out in December was going to be sweet symmetry but I have decided to pull the plug on that for several reasons um, so I won't be doing another sweet sampler after painted Christmas this side of Christmas um, but I will hopefully have one for you to think about ordering in December for delivery in January so we're going to skip a month if you like um, so at the end of October painted Christmas orders finish but you'll get your sampler in November plenty of time to do your Christmas crafting um, there won't be one for you to order in November, but there will in December, so I'm hoping that that is clear. Okay, let's have a look. Belinda says, Tansy is fine. In case you didn't know, Tansy is Belinda's little dog, who is, I believe, 16. She's a very old lady, but she says, yeah, she's fine. She's snuggled up in her blankets. Pam has been poorly all week. Oh, no, she's had to cancel all her events. She's feeling slightly better today and she's managed to book tickets for Coldplay this morning in August of next year. Well, that really is exciting, Pam. Something to look forward to, although it's a long way away. I'm really sorry you've been poorly. I'm glad that you're on the mend. Take it easy over the weekend. Pam is glad that Tansy is cosy. So Mary says her toe just bent over her foot at the top of the stairs and luckily she fell forward, not backwards. I think the house is out to get us. Goodness me, well, your stairs sound like, like they're out to get you, Mary. That sounds excruciating. Feel better soon. Okay, uh, anything else to tell you? Just classes. So if you would like to book for any of my classes in December, then booking for those goes up until um, into November. So you can book now. Um, it's not the closing date yet, so I'm not going to worry with the dates, but you've got another couple of weeks to book. Um, my monthly card class, so that all being well will still be an in-person class. If you'd like to book my card class by post, that's the same class, but you'll get it in the post with written instructions and photos. And a fancy fold cards class for December as well. So I'm taking bookings for all of those now. Um, I'm working on my class list for next year. Who knows whether we'll still be able to meet in person over the winter. I really hope so. But if not, I should be doing things by post and by video and so on, as I did before. Um, I'm waiting to hear back from my hall lady about my bookings. Um, and once I've got all the information, I will be sending it out to those of you who are on my mailing list. Um, I have two lists. I have a mailing list where you'll get a newsletter once a week, plus the odd occasional one. Like I sent out an extra one this week because Stamping Up announced a stamp sale uh, gave us very little notice of it so I sent something straight out to you and it was only a 24-hour sale so you needed to know um, and then I also have a mailing list for everyone who comes or has come to my classes um, so that mailing list is entirely about classes that are, are coming up and my newsletter mailing list is just a more general one so if you'd like to go on either or both of those and you're not there already let me know I send my newsletter out on a Friday. It's what I do after I finish doing my live today. Um, and that's kind of a roundup of, of all the, the information, um, one or two photos as well. So Pam says she hopes Mary's toe heals quickly. Absolutely. All right, so I can get rid of that bit of paper. And I'm going to turn the camera down to my desk. Um, and I'm going to unbox and play with a brand new kit, which I will show in just a second. This has been sitting on my craft room desk for about two and a half weeks and I've been dying to open it and play. But I haven't. I've saved it for you. So uh, that's what I'm going to do next. Bear with me while I redo the settings on my phone 
and fingers crossed that that's all going to work first time this week. You never can tell. I'm going to cover you over so you don't feel sick as I adjust everything, but I should probably have to fiddle around a bit um, once I uncover you as well. So here we go. Let's cover you over first of all. So we've got a yellow post-it today. Let's have a look. Various settings that I have to alter. Let's see if I can get it right first time today. That would be good, wouldn't it? Okay. So I've also got to change my camera stand a lot. entirely want to do what I need it to do. Let's see what that looks like. The cables out of the way. Okay, so I'm going to put the post note off my camera lens. And I'll be able to see what you can see, and I may have to fiddle around a little bit still. Okay, so I need to come forward and go straight. And let's make an adjustment here at the back. Let's just wait for my iPad to catch up with what I've just done. Okay, you still need to see that a little bit closer, don't you? Let's push that back there. You would think by now I would have got to grips with this new stand, but it's it's more complicated than I need really, but um you have to go with what you can get, don't you? Hmm, I wonder, I'm just going to no, I'm not. No, I'm not. <laughs> Leave it like that. Let's just lift it up a little bit. See if you can just see a little bit more. There we go. I think that might be better. Not very straight. Okay, right. That's better. Move that microphone out of the way. You don't need to see that. All right, so this is my Expressions and in Ink paper pumpkin kit now I don't know what to expect I haven't seen the contents because stamping up keep it a secret the box is beautiful it's got all this gorgeous kind of marbled ink on it and I know because they've told us that it's going to coordinate with the um, expressions in ink um, suite which is in the annual catalogue on pages 96 to 97 so I'm expecting something like this, but we'll see. So I'm going to put that aside for the minute. Now, if you didn't know, Paper Pumpkin is a subscription box which is available every month if you live in North America. It's not available in the rest of the world, at least not at the moment. We keep asking for it. It's complicated by the fact that, certainly as it is at the moment, because it's always been in the American market, it um, focuses on as well as general crafting, depending on the month, also holidays. So there is a box for Thanksgiving, uh, there is a Halloween box, there is a box for Independence Day, um, and certainly two of those are of no interest at all, by and large, to people in the UK and Europe, or indeed in um, our South Pacific markets as well. So at the moment, they're not making it available because they'd have to change an awful lot of things, but every so often they produce one that they do let us have, and that's what this is. So I can tell you it's going to make nine cards with three different designs. I know I've got stamps and too many ink pads in here, and I know that I need a block D, which is that one. I've also got some other blocks here because sometimes it's nice to just put one stamp on uh, its own block rather than have to keep taking them off and swapping them, particularly for something like this. It came wrapped in cellophane, and the only thing I've done is taken the cellophane off. But I'm going to open it now and let's see what's inside. Okay, so stamp set, two mini ink pads, which they call stamping spots. One is Bumblebee and one is Evening Evergreen. Those are colours I use a lot. I'm happy to have those. A little leaflet. So it tells me that the Expressions in Ink designer series paper coordinates perfectly. 
um, and it is absolutely gorgeous. I know lots of you have bought this paper from me. Um, I've used it in classes. I don't know anybody that doesn't love it. So that's just a flyer for that. Oh, look at this. This is all wrapped in tissue. This is so nice. It's like getting a little present. And actually, if you were going to, wanting a present for somebody, what could be nicer than receiving it like this? Okay, so this is the kit here, which is also in plastic. So there's absolutely no chance of it having got wet in transit. Okay. So you're all crafters, so I'm sure you'll do exactly the same as me and you would keep that piece of tissue paper. So I'm just going to fold it up a little bit. There we go, and pop that out of the way so if I have to stop and I haven't finished I've got this really really strong box that I can put everything into and also again it's beautiful to give as a gift really really nice um, so expressions in colour is what it's called so this kit cost me £20 and um, yeah three each of three designs of cards and I will give you the item number 158477 let's write that down somewhere I've got a fairly thick pen here we go 158477 20 pounds okay so here are my stamps so they say sending hugs congratulations thanks you are amazing and then I've got many and for everything so I could obviously say many congratulations congratulations on its own uh, thanks for everything many thanks so they were all build up together then I've also got this one which is like an inky kind of um, swirl a bit like on the box this kind of effect and then oh, remember what I've been told which is bring them up slowly to the camera there we go I'm trying to sh show you the images so there are two small individual flowers a little tiny sprig of buds or leaves and then this group of flowers and leaves and buds or berries so pretty stamps I like those a lot and this shape echoes the dyes which come with the expressions in ink um, uh, dyes or bundle right so let's open up this little pack I'm not going on holiday but if I was or if I had I don't know a caravan or something that I was going to go off in this would be brilliant to take because everything's in here all I need to do would be remember to pop in a stamp block and as I say block D will fit all of the stamps so you only have to take the one with you if you want it's even got glue in here these are little sticky dots there are some stamping dimensionals the 3d foam pads so glue is in there Space. Oh, these are nice. Very pretty iridescent sequins. They've got pink and yellow and green on them. And I can feel that they've got a glue dot on the back. I have some baker's twine in evening evergreen. Then envelopes. Oh, different sizes. I wasn't expecting that. So I've got three of one size and six of another size. So this one is kind of a note card size. Let me find something a little bit darker to put that on. There we go. So these are plain white envelopes. And then some which are more of a standard size. Now because these are produced in America, you've got American sized cards and envelopes in the larger size. So they're a little bit smaller than our standard card which we tend to make with half a sheet of A4 but not a lot smaller if I put my hand on that you know you can see it's it's a you know a good sized envelope for a good sized card 
Right, what else have we got? Card bases, these look pretty. So I have three which are bumblebee. So these are scored down the middle. I have three, oh these are pretty. Three which are fresh freesia and polished pink. So the colours in this set are fresh freesia, polished pink, evening evergreen and bumblebee. And then there must be three more somewhere that are slightly smaller. Here we go. Three card bases which are evening evergreen. So these are the note card size with the crease down the middle again. So those are all ready to use. And then I've got lots of die cut pieces. So I've got three sheets like this. pop those out in a minute. I have three sheets, no not three sheets, sorry, one sheet with lots on it of labels. So I've got six of these long hexagons and six of these rectangles. Now I'm only going to make nine cards so I'll probably end up with some spares of those. I have three of these which are beautiful printed paper so it's that same design it looks like alcohol ink if you've used alcohol inks before or if you think about marbling um, that kind of effect you get when you drop ink um, onto water that kind of effect this is evening evergreen I have one two three four five six little die cut banners if you can see those let me lift those up just a little bit so I can obviously put words on um, I've got printed vellum. Again, I'll lift this up. So I've got three pieces like this. I think, I think the camera's picking that up, especially if I move it forward a little bit. There we go. Three of those. And one, two, three sheets of this vellum. Which again is printed it's a little bit as if I had heat embossed it with white so I've got this lovely floral design here now that echoes one of the stamps and it coordinates as well with um, the shapes in those dies I was telling you about earlier which are from the sweet in the annual catalogue and then I've got some words so thanks is the English one but I've also got danke and merci there so if you do have people abroad um, who speak French or German, you could certainly use those. Alrighty. And then finally, I have an instruction sheet, which will tell me exactly what they intended with all the bits and pieces. But of course, um, I can be as creative as I like with this. So when I open it, I've got card number one here. And it tells me what to do with which pieces. Uh, it tells me how much linen thread I'm going to need. 26 inches. And there is even a ruler. If I can get that under the camera. Let's try. I'll just show you the sideways part here. Down one side of the instruction sheet there's a ruler. So I don't even need a ruler to measure my thread. So... This is step by step here. It tells me which stamps and which ink they have used. But again, obviously that's up to me. This is card number two. Same again. Step by step instructions. And card number three. And then on the back, there are no instructions. But instead they've just shown me exactly what I need. So that makes life very easy indeed. Now, as a general rule with a kit, um, there are three kind of very simple steps to putting it together. First of all, sort. Sort everything out and put it in piles for the different designs of the card. Now, if you're going to do your own thing, obviously you don't have to do that at all. With a kit, I usually make one of each design and then I decide what I'm going to do with, with the other components. Sometimes I make all of them exactly as in the kit if I really like them. Sometimes I play around, I might add things in my stash or whatever. But if you're just going to make them as per the instructions, then sort everything out. You'll see me do that in a minute. Then stick it 
um, and send it. And you could add in another S really, I suppose, which is stamp. So sort, stamp, stick and send. Very easy to remember. So let's get started then, because that's what I've been excited about. I'm going to do this one first. It's card number one, but it's also got this beautiful purple and pink card base, which I can't wait to get my hands on. So I'm going to need my card base, which is here somewhere. There we go. I've got three of those. Then I'm going to need my die cut flower pieces, which I'm just going to push out of the vellum. These are coming out really easily. Um, I'm going to need my thread, which I've got. I'll measure that and cut some of that in a minute. I'm going to need one of these die cut hexagon labels. So let's take three of those because I've got three cards. I'm going to need the bumblebee ink pad. So I've just got a little perforations either side. Uh, no, not either side, one side, here we go, of the label. Let's see if I can do this so you can actually see. Sometimes these come open really, really cleanly when they're perforated like this, and sometimes they don't. And that one's not going to, so I'm actually just going to run my scissors along the perforation. There we go. And that means I can then open my ink pad and the other side of the label is not perforated and I'm not going to tear that off. I'm going to leave that because that will help keep that lid on when I put it away to store it. And when I store these, I'm going to store them upside down. Normally with the full size stamping up ink pads, you don't need to store them upside down like that because it's designed in that the ink pad stores if I just partially open that, you can see that storing in the box upside down. That's how they're designed. But with one like this, I am going to store it upside down just so the top of my ink pad is moist. And I will be able to re-ink this with a standard Bumblebee re-inker. So that is great. It's a felt ink pad. That means it's going to need just a little bit more pressure when I come to ink up my stamp because it's not squidgy like the large foam stamp uh, ink pads are. But that's fine. Okay, I'm just looking see if there are any more comments let's have a look I keep forgetting because they're not there all the time now oh Kay's here hi Kay lovely to have you Carol has ordered the kit after seeing somebody else's unboxing and she should have it on Monday I hopefully oh I hope so too Carol I'll be interested to see what you do whether you follow the instructions or whether you do your own thing because you are very creative so it'll be interesting to see what you do with it Right, so I've got everything I need and they suggest I use the You Are Amazing stamp. So I'm going to dig the stamps out in a sec. I'm going to need some sequins, some of the glue dots and some of the dimensionals. All right, so the only thing I need to do now is to just cut my twine to size. So let me look back and see how much twine I need. So I'm now looking at the instructions for how to make the card. It tells me 26 inches. OK, well, I have got grid paper, so I'm going to measure my 26 inches of twine on that. And I'm just going to cut one piece to start with, because sometimes I find that the amount of twine they tell you you need is enormously longer than you actually need. So I'm a bit frugal and <laughs> I usually only use what I need um, and then I might be able to save some if I haven't cut it that long. So let's have a look. So that was 16. So I need another 10 inches. There we go. So this is the 26 inches that they recommend and we'll see how that works. Okay, so taking one card at a time, that's the bits. And I'm just gonna put some of these stamps on the block. So I'm obviously gonna need the words that fit on here. You are amazing is the one they recommend. So 
so I'm going to just put it face up on my grid paper just so I can get it on my block nice and straight. Here's my block D. There we go. And very often with new stamps, they need just a little bit of wearing in. So I tend to ink stamp clean, ink stamp clean a few times just to get any manufacturing residue from the stamp. And I'm using this ink pad upside down because this stamp is bigger than the ink pad. And that will just enable me to uh, cover it evenly with ink more easily. Now it's stamped fine, but not perfectly. And I know that's because there is some manufacturing residue on here. So I'm just going to repeat, I've got my scrub here to clean it with. You might have a chamois that you use. So I'm just stamping. That's better already, actually. It was a little bit blobby before. Some parts have picked up more ink than others. So probably one more time will mean it's perfect. And after that, it'll be ready to use every time. It's just when stamps are new. You get it with red rubber stamps sometimes as well. Yeah, that's that's looking better okay so what do the instructions tell me so they show me the finished card where I've got my die cut sitting over the top there of the baker's twine and then I'm gonna have a label on there so that's obviously the first thing to do is to tie my twine round and it's going around twice so I'll fold my card base in half first of all. And I have got my trusty bone folder. There's no bone folder in the box, but I could just use my nail like that. And I'm going to tie my twine round. Ooh, so yes, I definitely, definitely do need the 26 inches, I think, of this. In fact, might be inclined to say I need a little bit more. Um, yeah, that's definitely gone around twice in the picture. So it does not leave you very much to tie a bow with. And I'm not too bad at bows, so I'd be inclined to say you need a little bit more twine, I think. I'm going to tie this in a knot. I could not get a bow out of that. So if the Stamping Up designers did... They're doing better than me. So in fact, I'm not going to leave that as a knot. I'm going to use this on whatever else I need to twine on. And let's just cut another piece. So there we go. So that's my first top tip, is when you're making this card, you need more than the twine they tell you you need. So I reckon, let's see how much more I need. if I cut this and then measure it and tell you if you've got one of these sitting waiting to make it or if you're thinking about getting one you will know straight away won't you okay. so I might have been able to get away with an inch or so less than this new piece but let's see what what I've measured it at 16 about 30 inches I reckon you need about 30 inches so yeah about four inches more than they say I'm going to put that on there 30 inches okay right now let's tie this round so do I want it crossed or not probably not to see if there are any more comments come up there aren't you're all waiting to see if I can tie a bow first time aren't you <laughs> and I'm probably off camera there I need to work further onto my desk than I used to have to with this new new camera stand those of you that don't know I've been using a camera stand for about a year 
I got to grips with what it could and couldn't do and all its vagaries and then it broke. It actually broke during one of these sessions. <laughs> so then um, they are not available anymore. Company appears to have gone defunct. So I couldn't do anything about it. Um, so the one I've got is completely different and I'm not entirely sure I'm happy with it. But it is more complicated so it may just be operator error which is why I faff around with it far more than I used to. Although I think actually when I started with the other one, I used to faff with that quite a lot too. Right, so that's my bow round. I think it might need to come up a little bit more. There we go. Now I need one of my die cut pieces. And so they've got their bow kind of sitting sideways. I wonder if I can tweak mine to go sideways. Yes. Then let me make sure I've got the right side up. There we go. So that goes on there. Something like that. And then I need some of these little glue dots to fix it in place. Okay. I thought I might be able to just peel off one side, but the whole thing's come off. That's okay. I'm going to try and pop these on somewhere where... On the front there's a like a thick area of the printing so that they hopefully won't show through too much if you've used vellum before you will know that it's very difficult to attach it well not very difficult no you need to try to attach it so that you can't see the glue through from the front because otherwise it doesn't look as pretty and it just needs a little bit of thought there are various ways of doing it in this kit it's little tiny glue dots so let me try and decide one more place to put a glue dot hmm. let's try there i think i've just scattered them roughly evenly and i'm just going to take the backing off okay that's coming off fine if you're used to our glue dots in a roll these are obviously different but that looks fine. All the backings come off with no hassle. Now I just need to stick this down. There we are. That looks okay and I don't think I can see the glue dots from the front. So that's a bonus. And I am just going to drink some of my tea, which I've realised is sitting here going cold as I get a dry throat. <laughs> Oh, that's better. Okay, and now I just need to stamp my banner and pop my sequins on, then that card is done. So here is my uh, little banner. Now, they don't tell you to get a foam mat for your photopolymer stamp, but I have got one handy, so I'm going to use that. But otherwise, I would suggest you stamp these resting on a pad of paper, a magazine, something like that. A mouse mat. Do people use mouse mats anymore? I don't know. Um, so something like that just so that you've got a little bit of softness on your work su surface um, which will help the stamp image come out better because there's no cushioning on these photopolymer stamps okay now forgive me if you get my head I'm just going to try and get immediately above this so I can stamp it straight there we are you are amazing And they're suggesting I pop that up on some of the foam pads. So I'm going to do that. They say two. Oh, I'm going to go wild and use an extra one. Because otherwise I think that's going to sag in the middle. And as I said last week, I don't want a saggy middle. Okay. And that's just going to go on here somewhere. Now, if I thought about it, I would actually have put my dimensional slightly down from the centre. Otherwise, they're just going to sit on top of this uh, thread and wobble. So I'm actually going to position this a little bit lower than I probably would on the others. Just so my dimensionals are going to sit on the flat part of the card rather than sit on top of the twine. There we are. 
but I think that looks absolutely fine. And now some of these little sequins, which are so pretty. They tell me to use five. There's so many on here that I'm sure I could use more than five if I wanted. And I'm just pushing them onto the backing before I peel them off because actually it's really warmed up in my craft room. I haven't got the heating on. It must be with my hot air coming out as I chat. Um, and they're, they're wanting to come apart from the sequins, so I'm just pushing them onto the sequin first. Um, we've got one there, one there. There we are. So that is my completed card. I do think that is really pretty. I'm just going to tilt it a little bit hoping that the light will catch those sequins so that's lovely so my kit will make two more like this so I've got three of those all together so let me put that towards the back and I'm just going to clean my stamp so I'm not going to make the next two live because otherwise you'll be still watching me craft at about five o'clock let's see what the next card is so card number two Um, oh yes, I'm on the wrong page. I need one at the back that tells me what I need. There we are. So card number two. So this is the little note card that sized card. So I need my green card base. My layers. What else do you need? I'm going to need both ink pads, so let me find the other one and open that. So I'm using evergreen one. I'm going to need my vellum thanks. So let's just push that out. I'm going to need one of those little banners there. I've just thrown a load of things on the floor. Let's hope it wasn't in there. No, it wasn't. It's getting darker and darker outside. Tell me if you need me to put some lights on. Um, it'll obviously make things brighter, but it often casts shadows because I don't have the perfect setup with lights. So let me know if you need lights. If you can see okay, I will carry on. And then I'm just going to set up my stamps. So I'm going to need this one here, which is the group of flowers. And then I'm going to need this little four petaled flower. Now I have got a little block A, which that's going to fit on perfectly, but obviously if you've only got a block D, as they suggest, it will work with that fine. And I'm just going to ink and stamp and clean these again and just see. They'll probably need the same treatment as that first stamp. Just to get any of the manufacturing residue from them. I don't know what it is about ink stamp clean uh, rather than just cleaning the stamp but it does seem to work better somehow I know some people put uh, get hold of a, a pencil eraser and rub it over the stamp I've never found that very helpful but perhaps I'm just not doing it right right that one looks good uh, for me ink stamp clean works brilliantly That one's perfect now. Okay. Checking again. No other comments. All right. So I think you're probably all happy. No one said put the lights on. I can't see. All right. So let's have a look. I'm also going to need dimensionals, the little sticky dots and some sequins. 
and they're using the for everything stamp as well which i haven't got out i've just seen that one so we're obviously going to use the die cut that says thanks and then we're going to stamp for everything so let me pop that on a block again i like to use my grid paper to line up the stamp i put the stamp on the line on the grid paper and then i line up my block with the lines on the grid paper and then usually that is there nice and straight on there occasionally i've managed to wobble it in on the way but usually it's straight and that one is not <laughs> not very straight having said that let's see if that's any better yeah that's better that one doesn't really need anything doing to it that was fine straight from the packet okay so i've got all my bits now let me find the instructions uh it doesn't look like i'm going to need any twine for this so they suggest that i stamp with both those flower images on my patterned layer so let's do that first using the evening evergreen ink pad i'm just going to pop my grid paper and uh, sorry my foam mat underneath my grid paper now they show three of these images stamped i don't know if i'm going to do three or not they've got them kind of coming across the center like that so i'll see how i feel feel like I might want them kind of going off the edge a little bit. Mm, I'm not sure. Might might put some more of those on in a minute, but I'll just do some of this little flower, which I do really like. This has ended up quite symmetrical. That wasn't my intention. Okay, so I'll lift that up for you to see, hopefully. got tone on tone effect with the evening evergreen ink on that patterned paper take my foam mat out just so i'm working on something flat so what's the next thing the next thing is to attach that to my card base so they suggest i use sticky dots for that i'm actually going to go against that and just use my multi-purpose glue because this is here um, and it's a little bit quicker than peeling off all those dots but if I was away on holiday I might not have that with me or again if I had given this as a gift um, I wouldn't need to give glue with it because those sticky dots will work just fine there we are and then I need my die cut vellum word and I do need some sticky dots on the back of that they even tell me where to put them actually on this little instruction sheet just here put one on the S where there is quite a thick piece of pattern there so that will hide that one and one there oops that's stuck to my finger yeah so they've actually on the instructions they've shown you where the patterning is thicker and will hide the glue dot there we are except i think it needs one on this end as well <laughs> but you know that's not crucial it's not going to fall off if i don't put one on there i just feel like it needs one on the end okay and then i'll take the backing off those glue dots oh, i'm wearing one of them back 
working certainly comes off these really really easily they're not not difficult to use in that sense at all right so the one I put at the beginning came off on my fingers so let's just add one back there there we go so then they've popped this towards the right of center and slightly down as well so that's that and then I just need to stamp my little banner here and they've actually used bumblebee ink for that and for everything is the word I need there we go Okay, again, apologies for the back of my head if that's what you're getting. There we go. Ooh. Now that looks like I probably did not clean my stamp. I thought I cleaned my stamp. I stamped it in Evening Evergreen to test it out. And I've got a very strange colour there from my Bumblebee ink pad. So let's turn that over and try again. Yeah, I've got, well, that's okay. I've got some Evening Evergreen ink right across the middle of that. So let me just use a bit of scrap paper and just try and, that looks better, dab that ink pad off a little bit. If you can see or not here, some kind of greenish greenish ink which is not good still a little bit of green there that looks better okay right <laughs> let's try again so if you put an inky stamp into the wrong color ink pad you can always rectify it deal with it straight away don't put it away and think I'll do that tomorrow dab off the ink that's the wrong colour with scrap paper or a bit of kitchen paper and then you'll probably need to re-ink your ink pad. This one is tiny so I probably can get away with not re-inking it just yet. But there we go. Sometimes it's not a bad thing to make a mistake because then I can show you what I would do in the same situation. Now they have at this they've put I think they put dimensionals yes so these little dark grey dots are sticky dots they've put dimensionals on the back of this banner and these dimensionals are quite big so I'm going to have to cut those down I think there we go Let's cut that in half otherwise they're going to be poking out Of the side of my banner and I don't really want them to show on the front and I'm just going to again use one extra piece they put one at each end but I'm just adding one in the middle because I think it's good to support the middle of a banner one is showing on the front I'm just going to move it down a bit there we go and then that just goes down here thanks for everything and then the finishing touch is some of those little sequins and they tell me to use five They do even show me on the instructions where they think they should go. So if you're not confident with placing your embellishments, you don't even have to make a decision on that. So that is that finished card, which is very pretty. I really like the stamping on that patterned paper. It does add a little something to it, definitely. So that's card number two. 
let me move all these bits and pieces of backing and then we will do the final one which is the one which has got lots of pieces pre die cut in fact it's got lots of pieces full stop so this is number three so i need one of those yellow card bases so i've got my bumblebee card base I need a vellum layer, printed vellum, there we are, um, sequins I've got, I need some twine, I have to see how much twine I need in a minute, and then three of these die cut pieces. So I'm just going to push these out carefully because they're quite fine, they're like little sprays of buds or berries. accidentally pull those little circular pieces off and I'm trying not to bend the stems although I'm guessing I'm going to be gluing them down so if they're a little bit bent it won't be a disaster there we go so that's my first piece Actually, I'm just going to carefully cut between those pieces because I think it's going to be easier to push these out if I'm not worrying about not bending another one. are super detailed. You would be taking them very carefully out of a die if you just die cut these but they actually come out from the backing really nicely. They are almost completely cut. There's only tiny tiny little paper tabs holding them in place. So I've got a little bit of confetti there. There we go, that's the second one. Finally, this one. Okay, I must have some of my tea. My throat is getting so dry. I'm going to need my bumblebee ink pad. I'm going to need the congratulations stamp, which is here. Now, the um, there's a sending hug stamp, which is the same length pretty much, so that would definitely work instead. But I will go with congratulations for this. Pop that on a block. And then I'm just going to ink and stamp it just to check that it's stamping nicely or see if I need to just clean it before I use it. Yeah, it needs it clean as well. It's almost always the case with new stamps. I usually do this off camera if I'm using a new set with you, but... Uh, you're seeing it exactly as it is today. I think that wants one more. Because the, the letters are slightly more solid, I think. Let me turn back to the instructions for the card. There we are. So this is what it's going to look like, which is very pretty. It's like a little kind of bouquet effect. So I'm going to attach the printed vellum to the card base first of all. 
and they're telling me on the instructions to use four glue dots in the centre and that I'm guessing is because they will then be hidden by those die cut pieces. So do I want my leaves facing down or my leaves facing up? That way I think. Uh, let's find the glue dots. So I didn't ask, is anybody crafting along today? Maybe you've got this kit and you're crafting along with me, or maybe you're doing something completely different. So let me know if you're crafting, and if you're crafting, what are you making? You might just be sitting with your feet up and some knitting, <laughs> and a cup of tea, I don't know. Let me know what you're doing as you watch. Right, so that then goes in the centre of my card base. And then I need to put glue dots, and they're suggesting just one glue dot in the centre of each of the three die cut pieces. Okay, so I think they've put down, which one have they put down? They've put down the purple one last. Uh, green one first so I'm looking at the shapes on the instructions here it probably doesn't matter which one you put down first so there's a little wide section in the middle which will easily fit a glue dot so that's where they say to put it big actually this one there we go that's going to not go over the edges I didn't want it to overlap the edges and then get caught when I try to put it in an envelope um, and one in the pink one still waiting to see if anybody is crafting along So that's all my die cut. So this says 12 inches of twine and I'm just going to kind of loop it across the front. So I'm guessing 12 inches is going to look about right for that. So I'm using the piece I cut off earlier. If you remember right at the start, I cut the piece as they measured and decided I needed a bit more to be able to tie a bow. So I've just cut this from that. And it's just kind of just kind of looped. There we go. And it's kind of the ends are all together in the middle. So I've got a loop and an end each side. It's not actually a bow, but I think the effect will probably end up being as if it was a bow. There we go. Right, let's push that to the back because I'm now going to stamp. Oh, I haven't got my piece to stamp. one of these printed banners and I've got my congratulations stamp which is not that one it's that one my bumblebee ink pad and again 
again if you're getting my head I'm sorry I don't get over the top of this it's very hard to see where I'm stamping there we are congratulations and this one they're saying pop dimensionals on the back I think I agree with them so they put two on like that I am going to use an extra one normally in these kits there are as ample glue dots and dimensionals so I'm sure I won't be leaving myself short later on by using an extra one and then this is going to go across the center and trap that thread like that there we go and then I just need some sequins they say five again so let's go with five sequins I haven't stamped inside these cards I obviously could stamp congratulations inside as well so this is really quite a dimensional card there's lots of kind of movement from these pieces there's lots of texture it's a really pretty card this one so I've now made one of each of those cards and we're past three o'clock so I'm not going to make any more but I can tell you I really like these I think the contents of the kit are beautiful uh, the instructions are clear. You've just seen. I've never seen these before. It's very easy to follow. It's all pictures uh, with just a few words for things like measurements. Um, card number one, I do think you need a little bit more twine than they say. I think you need 30 inches, not 26. So four inches extra if you want to tie a bow as they have. The stamps are fantastic and of course when I've finished making all the cards I've got the stamps and the ink pads left over. These will coordinate really nicely with the expressions in ink um, suite with that paper particularly but also they'll be lovely to use on all kinds of other projects so the stamp set will work completely on its own just with some card because of course I've still got the ink pads as well. I think this is a great kit. A beginner could do this because it's very, very clear and there's no die cutting, no fussy cutting, nothing like that to do. Um, I think it would make a fantastic present. £20 is a pretty good price point. Um, so if you've got someone who either likes crafting or might enjoy trying crafting out, um, teenagers as well I think would enjoy this, then this would be a lovely present either for birthday or for Christmas. Um, or if you've got people, you know, children, grandchildren that you like to do things with at weekends, particularly with the winter weather coming. Um, our kits are great and I think this one is a really, really pretty one. So let me pull all the cards out and show you. I might actually turn my grid paper over so you're not being distracted by all the ink on it. Let me just remind you, if you like the kit, the number is 158477. 158477. Um, and it's £20 and that includes two ink pads and the stamps. You will need a block. Block D will fit all of those images perfectly well. There we are. Let me move that as much as I can. Let's just flatten that one. That one wants to just pop up a little bit. So there are the three cards from today, which I do think are lovely. I'm very pleased with those. I'm going to enjoy making the rest of them, maybe this weekend. Who knows? Um, I'm just going to move the camera back up to say goodbye to you. So bear with me while I do that. done it okay not to worry Belinda Belinda says she's missed a whole chunk a phone call came in that she needed to take she's got this kit she'll catch up on the replay um, and she's also working with Eden's Garden now more on Eden's Garden another time Eden's Garden is going to be in the January to 
June mini catalog but you are going to be able to buy it early so I will tell you more about that when it's available it's only available to demonstrate at the moment um, so that we can have a play and then give you some ideas I haven't got it though so um, I've, I've been restrained I haven't actually ordered that one but I will tell you more about how you can get hold of it and I'll show you some pictures so I hope you have a lovely weekend thank you so much for joining me again um, I've forgotten to say to you that it does really help me if you can hit that share button and like or love the video because then Facebook thinks it's popular and will show it to more people and that way more people interested in crafting can get to see what we do on a Friday afternoon. So please like and share and thank you in advance for doing that. Um, it's also the moment when I usually tell you what I'm going to do next week and I have to be honest and tell you that I haven't decided yet so I'm sorry about that but come back at two o'clock on Friday next week there will be something happening here I will put a Facebook event up for it and tell you what I'm going to do I was very very late putting the one up for today for which my apologies I just forgot to do it I'm afraid I try and do it on Monday or Tuesday and I just completely forgot this week but thanks ever so much for joining me I love the kit and I hope you enjoyed seeing me unbox it and I'll look forward to seeing you again next week have a great weekend bye bye